Hello students, today we are going to learn the poem The Blessed Damsel by Rosetti. A wonderful poem written by a young man of 19, Rosetti, The Blessed Damsel first published in The Germs in 1849. The poem breathes all the freshness, warmth and passion of the youth. The poem is full of fine, subtle touches. The freshness and spaciousness that are lacking in some of the later ornate later poems of Rossetti. Initially, the title which Rossetti wanted to use for this poem was Thoughts Towards Nature. The source of this poem is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Autobiographical elements of Rossetti can also be traced in this poem. For instance, the picture of the damsel is based on Elizabeth Siddle, the dream girl that he was destined to love but lose. The poem is about the blessed damsel who is in heaven longing passionately for her lover who is still on the earth. Her intense longing is felt by the lover on the earth, but at the same time, she has been in heaven for years together. He yearns for her from the earth and she waits for him in the heaven. All these years in heaven, she is gazing from the heavenly height, trying to see her lover on the earth. But to her lover on the earth, it had been like ages. She thinks of his coming to heaven and what she will do when he comes. She will take him to the deep wells of light, bathe with him in the heavenly streams and visit the occult forbidden shrine. She will take him to Lady Mary and declare their love and get her approval. And then they will be taken by Mary to God. There she will ask Lord Christ to reunite them as lovers in heaven forever. But all this she will do only when he comes. She waits hopefully, a little wistfully, and sobs in the end. The lover on the earth hears her tears and sees her smile. Despair in Rosetti's vision is also found in heaven. Despair and longing for earthly bliss for human love. This is the essence of the poem. Coming to the poet, Rossetti was a romantic, sensuous and passionate poet. He was not a sensual poet, but a sensuous poet, a lover of female beauty. Rossetti is called a Victorian romantic pre-Raphaelite craftsman and decorator of world pictures. Like the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood, he used primary colors and avoided low tones and dark backgrounds, which were at that time in fashion. Like other pre-Raphaelites, he embraced literature as eagerly as art. Rosity deals with the love of the blessed damsel, the heavenly spirit, as if she was still an earthly creature with all the warmth and intensity of love found in a young girl. In spite of the calm, deep eyes and angelic voice, this lovely damsel longs so passionately for her lover that her bosom makes the gold bars of heaven rampant warm. Her sobs and tears are so touching as to melt the heart of all lovers. There is a peculiar mixture of the human and the angelic feel in the poem. Just as there is a strange alteration between heaven and earth, one may even trace in the poem the obvious influence of Dante's divine comedy. It combines physical love with the spiritual. Rosetti is a painter first and poet next. His picture appeared first and poems came later. 
Like Keats, he is a pictorial poet. His outlook towards the world is essentially that of a painter. He thinks and feels in pigments. Only a painter could have given lines like these. I quote from the poem, The blessed damsel leaned out from the gold bar of heaven. She had three lilies in her hand and stars in her hair were seven and souths mounting up to God went by like these flames. Another delicate exquisite device is the interacting at intervals. In language of perfect simplicity and yet without archaism of the main poem. The thoughts of the distant lover still enchanted by earth. For example, I quote from the poem again. Oh sweet even now in that bird's song. Strove not her accents there, I unquote. The Blessed Damsel is one of the most fascinating poems written by Rossetti. It combines the vastness with the nearness, which lends it an incomparable charm. As said by A.C. Benson, in contrast to the depth and distance of the picture, comes the thought of nearness and closeness of the life of human life that passes through the dizzy spaces like an electric thrill and hold the faithful hearts close together even through one stands in the tranquil and serene fortress of heaven and the other spins a fervid and mortal atom in the poor fretful world. There is a genial faith in the far off union, the passionate heart forecasting the perfect happiness of the meeting. For he will come. This is what she says. These are her words. She is so sure that he will definitely come. This beautiful poem is a supreme instance of the charming of the ancient form with the most passionate dreams of today. The manner in which Rosetti turns to heaven and to a spiritual afterlife would convey the idea that his is religious poetry. In fact, the title of his poem, The Blessed Damsel, brings to mind the Virgin Mary. But Rossetti's intention was never to write for religious purposes. On contrary, whereas religious beliefs in shedding of all earthly bonds following a union with God, the idea Rossetti presents in The Blessed Damsel is that earthly love survives even in heaven. There is also a lot that the religious minded would object to in his portrayal of the disconsolate woman's indifference to all heavenly delights in her disconsolate grief-stricken state. The Blessed Damosel is an excellent example of pre-Raphaelite poetry where Rossetti's extraordinary imagination, his literary expression, subtlety, enchanting melody, expression and intellectual brilliance, keen observation and passion towards richly sensuous human experience are packed with pictorial description. In the opening lines of the poem, the author speaks about a noble unmarried young lady, that is the blessed damsel, a beautiful maiden who had attained heaven after her death. She stood leaning out from the golden bar of fence which surrounded heaven. Her eyes were deep and tranquil as calm waters in the evening expressing deep feelings of longing. In her hand were three lilies and in her hair were seven stars. Symbolically, the three lilies stand for three noble qualities, that is, chastity, purity and innocence. Similarly, the seven stars, seven is a mystic and sacred number. The seven stars stand for seven traditional virtues, they are temperance, prudence, faith, fortitude, justice, 
charity and hope. The robe she wore was loose at one end and it was plain with no flowers to adorn it except a white rose as a symbol of purity and excellence which was a gift to her from Virgin Mary as a token of her service. Her hair which lay on her back was yellow like ripe corn. This is how she is described. It seemed to the blessed damsel that she had taken up her new duties in heaven as one of God's choristers for scarcely a day. The first sense of wonder in heaven still remained with her, but those on earth who had missed her not just for one day but for ten years. The burden of this long separation was deeply felt by the lover on the earth. Standing at the same spot where he went to meet his love, he lost himself in a revere, that is a daydream, and felt that his beloved still leaned over him so that her hair fell all over his face. But on waking up from the revere, he found that it was not her hair that fell over his face but the falling leaves of the autumn. At the same time, the blessed damsel who was leaning out from the rampart of God's house which has been built over the sheer depth so that it stands as a bridge across the flood of ether. The house stood so high that the sun was scarcely visible to her. The blessed damsel could see some of her new friends enjoying themselves in loving games and calling each other by their chaste names. The damsel could also see the souls ascending from earth like flames to God. But she did not join her friends. Instead, she continued to lean on the golden bar so that the bar must have received the warmth of her bosom. A typical pre-Raphaelite description. The crescent moon was slowly fluttering in the gulf of space like a little feather. The weather was still and the damsel spoke with the voice which the stars had when they sang together in chorus in praise of God. At this moment, the lover on earth fancied that he heard the voice of his beloved in the song of a bird. He even imagined that he heard her steps coming down from heaven in the sound of midday bells being rung in churches. The poet intended to convey that the church bells helped to connect heaven and earth and bring down angels to the earth. The blessed damsel speaking from heaven wished that her lover would come to her through an imaginative staircase. She felt sure that he would definitely come. For both had been praying for their reunion and two prayers were a perfect strength. The damsel feels sure that God cannot refuse the prayers of two people for the same cause. The damsel said that when her lover was raised to heaven and an arole would surround his head as a mark of blessedness of heaven for those who gain victory over the desires of the flesh and the evils of the world. She would take him by the hand and lead him to the deep wells of light or springs of knowledge in heaven and bathe there in God's sight. She would also take him to the mysterious shrine whose lamps are stirred by prayers offered to God. The damsel would also take her lover to the shadow of that mystic tree or the tree of life described in the Bible in the Garden of Eden, eating whose fruit would make one immortal in which the dove or the Holy Ghost sometimes resides, inspiring each leaf to utter the name of God. The damsel would then teach her love the songs she had learnt in heaven. She hopes to instruct her lover through songs in paradise. 
she expects him to show reverence in learning the songs of heaven. She wants to give him all the knowledge which she learned so far in the heaven. The lover on earth wonders whether there is any chance of his reunion with his beloved. The lover who had been listening to the words of his beloved so far was he is struck with her repeated saying, we too, we too. Now he remembers the time when they were both one. He felt his own misgiving about whether his love for her, which was his only affinity with her, would be a sufficient force to reunite him with her. But the blessed damsel was not troubled by any such doubts in heaven. She went on to say that she and her lover would go to the groves where Lady Mary would be found with her five handmaidens. And these handmaidens sat in a circle weaving the birth robes for those who die on earth and are born in heaven. The damsel is planning to speak of her love to Mother Mary. Her lover might not be able to speak freely because of modesty. The damsel would make her lover feel at home by laying her cheek against his and talking to him about her love. Mother Mary would then lead them both to the presence of Christ. The damsel would beg Christ to allow her to live forever in love with her lover. She feels that her pride in her lover is at this instance justified because her request is for a legitimate cause. Now let us look at the mystical dimensions observed in the poem. The blessed damsel realizes that she has been dreaming when she wakes up from her trance. The damsel ceased speaking as the light thrilled towards her full of angels. The lover on earth feels that she must be happy and he is able to feel the damsel smiling in heaven. Though golden, the bars of heaven are still barriers to the damsel and they stand between her and her lover. Sorrow in heaven is a contradiction in terms, but the damsel feels sorrow. Her love is so strong, pure and real that it makes her disconsolate even in heaven. The damsel is weeping on account of her unfulfilled longing. Then. The lover on earth sees her throwing her arms along the bars and weeping. He even hears her tears. Mysticism is quite the most distinctive feature of the blessed damsel, the poem. Primarily, the title and the story itself is highly mystical. The love of a spirit in heaven for a man who remained on earth. That is the mystic element. The blessed damsel who has died and gone to heaven had become one of God's cloisters, but her love for her earthly lover has not been extinguished. Her longing for reunion with her lover speaks volumes about her love and the lover also loves her deeply. So their longing and prayers will give perfect strength to ensure their reunion. Apart from the central idea, there are several traces of mysticism such as the three lilies in her hand and the stars in her hair which was seven. So both these are replete with mystical meaning. As mentioned earlier, the three lilies symbolically stand for chastity, purity and innocence and the seven stars in her hair stand for seven sacred virtues. The numbers chosen are very significant and mystical. The lover, hearing the sound of the damsel's steps in the midday bells and her voice on earth is highly mystical. There is also a mention of the living mystic tree which is said to be sometimes the haunt of the dove which inspires the leaves of the tree to chant the name of the God Almighty. The 
term is significant for the pictorial descriptions. For instance, the reference to the souls mounting up to God like thin flames not only heightens the mystic atmosphere but also makes a vivid pictorial sketch. Being a painter turned poet, some of the pictures provided in the poem are as vivid and beautiful as actual paintings. The poem opens with the picture of the damsel leaning out from the golden bar of heaven and her still look in her eyes. Three lilies in her hand and seven stars in her hair. Her hair is golden like ripe corn and her robe unadorned except for a single white rose which is the token of service for, to Mary. The description of the rampart of God's house constructed over the sheer depth from where begins space is also lucid. Some splendid pictures are the bar becoming warm because she has been leaning on it for a long time and the lilies in her hand lying as if asleep. Another brilliant description is of the living mystic tree in which the dove is known to reside sometimes and every leaf of the tree when touched by the dove chants the name of God audibly. Underneath this tree, the damsel will teach her lover the songs she learnt in heaven. The presence of God in heaven before whom are kneeling pious spirits whose heads are surrounded by aureoles is also comprehensively described. The final picture is that of the blessed damsel who having finished her speech stands smiling and praying in heaven. Towards her the light thrills filled with angels in strong level flight but soon her mood changes and throwing her hand on the golden bars she gives way to tears. Though there is no room for tears and unhappiness in heaven, a place full of bliss and happiness, the damsel shedding tears is a paradox. It emphasizes that love is more precious than heaven and it gives more bliss and ecstasy than life in heaven. This is quite an interesting and amazing description. Coming to the rhyme and meter of the poem, the following observations with regard to rhyme and meter can be made in the poem. The second, fourth and sixth lines of each stanza rhyme according to the vowel sound like place, face and space, a pace. In the fourth stanza, spelling similarity or I rhyme as in even and seven that is in the first stanza and a consonant sound as in hers and ears in the third stanza. So as we observe, there is a proper meter and rhyme maintained. The meter varies, but most lines contain seven to nine syllables. The dominant lines are in iambic tetrameter. In this format, a line has four pairs of unstressed and stressed syllables for a total of eight syllables. The term tetrameter from the Greek tetra meaning four and metron that is meaning measure indicates that a line has four syllabic units that is tetrameter. The first line of each of the first five stanzas is in iambic tetrameter as illustrated below by the opening lines of the poem. So if we go through the poem you understand how the iambic tetrameter is maintained. Coming to the conclusion, applying the pre-Raphaelite principles, Rossetti wrote the blessed damsel as a poignant, uncomplicated depiction of the kind of innocent young love that flourished in the days of the chivalric code. The poem presents a romantic, dreamlike atmosphere as a virginal young woman claimed recently by death stands at the threshold of the heaven pining for the young man she left behind while he likewise pines for her on earth. Rosetti links the heavenly damsel with her earthbound lover by mixing the spiritual imagery of heaven with the physical imagery of earth. Thus, 
while the seven stars of the heavenly constellations adorn her hair, it flows down her back with the color of a ripe corn. And while the young man thinks he feels her hair fall over him, he discovers only the fall of autumn leaves. In helping readers to fathom the pain of the separated young lovers, Rosity emphasizes the vastness of the gulf separating them. Therefore, it can be concluded that The Blessed Damsel by Dante Gabriel Rossetti is a poem with sensuous images, vivid pictorial presentations and powerful mystical representations. Hope the poem is clear and you understood. Thank you.